What's good? What's good? What's good? All right. I think we're live. All right, but happy new year. Chosen. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, you own Neo, I believe. Yeah, happy new year to everybody. Uh, you believe Neo will go down short term until March with recovery the rest of the year. Tilray AMC, QS, Palantir, Lucid, plan to go into. Oh, so you're big on the growth sector. Okay. Yeah, we could see a sector rotation. I mean, a lot of a lot of the common theme is you know when we had that second sector rotation the beginning of uh the beginning of this year um a lot of people they put their money into value instead of growth right sorry just gotta clean up here just doing a little charting today yeah so you know last year so a year from today about Literally, we hit the peak right there. Oops. Right. So this was most of the trading year here. Right there, that was majority of the year. And yeah, you saw during this time, you know, a lot of people got out of growth stocks. A good benchmark for me is Art K. This ETF here, the innovation ETF. This is Kathy Woods. You can kind of refer to this as well and to get a good grasp on, you know, what and when uh, happened to the growth sector. And a lot of that started right there, right? So this ETF alone is down. Again, assuming this benchmark, you know, it's down about 68%. So there's, there's been a massive sector rotation out of growth. Uh, you know, it could be overdue for a, a, full, a pullback here. It is breaking key levels. It's still selling off, at least this ETF. But yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of those plays are they're down tremendously. Uh, I talked about Neo in yesterday's video. Be sure to go watch it if you haven't yet. Uh, some key levels we're watching. I do think Neo is tremendously oversold. I just I agree with you. I think there's going to be some time until there's a nice clear recovery. So it's going to depend mark, you know, market conditions, right? So it's going to, it's going to depend macroeconomic conditions for both China and the U S that's the trouble with Neo. You kind of have to look at two economies. And then we also, have the Chinese new year coming up that will cause disruptions and, you know, supply chain, all that good stuff. Um, revenue, they took a pretty big hit The Chinese new year is not a joke. The things like, I swear it's like weeks long or something, but uh, even the even the domestic markets take a hit from the Chinese New Year. I remember every company I've ever worked in that was a, that was a uh, you know because I work in like operations, so that was always a co consideration uh, when it comes to like your backlog and things like that. It's like in your supply chain and procurement through China. Uh, if you do purchase through China, is like how do we mitigate the Chinese New Year delays? So. Yeah, you know, I think Neo, you know, they, they've been doing good. Their EPS and revenue has been pretty consistent. And I do think they just need to get through, yeah, the, you know, this first quarter here in March. I think March makes a lot of sense. So good part on you. Sebastian Chosen Few, German, NASCAR, Chico, Sid Roma. What's up? Happy New Year. Hope you guys had a great New Year. Do not use today or this year as an excuse to start your goals. To me, it's just another day because I don't really care. No offense. I just think if you guys have goals, you hit them the next day or the day of. You start today. Don't use the damn calendar year as an excuse to get a little motivation. You should be trying to find it through discipline any day of the year. Okay? So hopefully... Uh, use that as motivation these stocks are all down at least 80 percent from the all-time highs absolutely yep yeah lucid uh what is it was qs quantum something it's uh it's quantum something right quantum scape quantum something i can't remember what it is yeah quantum scape yeah i remember yeah these are all down right because they were overvalued they were pumped with liquidity they're all just overhyped gross stocks that have really good potential right nano dimensions is one i like to follow there's plenty of them. Uh, Palantir is good. Palantir is good. Palantir is getting a lot of, you know, they're government subsidized. So they just want a huge uh, contract with the government again. 
uh, I, I they do something with like cybersecurity, I believe, or something like that. Cloud, so cloud's an industry to look into as well. Uh, if you are looking long term, not financial advice, I just think cloud is just makes a lot of sense. Cloud, AI, uh, and cybersecurity, those are big ones to look into. Uh, especially with with and then you can look into defense into as well aerospace and defense being that there's geopolitical conflict might be a little late to that game i think we are good for long-term play and amc is probably good for a short flip so i won't analyze all these stocks so pick your favorite uh amc good for a short flip maybe you know, I, I'm just realistic, man. You know, what about AMC tells you it's time for a flip, okay? I can see it wedging a little bit here. The only thing I can buy into is that it, it's extremely discounted on the higher time frame. It's, this thing is very oversold. Um, doesn't mean it's time for a flip, though. It can still sell off, no doubt, as it has been all year. So we'll see what happens. Uh, you can see it's somewhat cyclic, right? It sells off pretty hard, and then it gets a nice pump. Sells off hard, pump. Sells off hard, pump. Uh, so maybe we do find support here as we have uh, for the entire calendar year, right? So January, so about a year ago marks January 3rd, 2022 is right there. So yeah, you can see, right? We're finding common support, but we are sustaining lower lows and lower highs. Price action and structure suggest that this can't continue down there's no reason why it can't so just be careful okay please you know you guys gotta really i hope this year was a wake-up call to a lot of people that were like into this hodler crap amc mother of all short squeeze and all like come on dude did you get it no all right so just hopefully it was a wake-up call and that the market at the end of the day Anything that's going to hold footing or floor is going to be these real genuine companies that have that are not highly overvalued. Now, most companies are overvalued right now, regardless, because we printed four trillion dollars in the last two years, more than that. So every company is overvalued. I get that. But there's ones that are substantially overvalued, like Carvana or Zoom. Zoom is at four hundred dollars. Right. I think I spelled it wrong. ZM. Right. Zoom is at almost six. Damn, Zoom was almost $600 at one point. Now it's at $67. Why is that? Well, because it came back home. That's why. It came back to where it should be, right? So I hope there's a lot of wake-up calls this year. Uh, and then take into account that the market just needs a breather anyways. So not only was everything going down, but the things that were extremely overvalued and pumped with liquidity are going down even more so. So they got a little more magnified. And that's why you have companies that are in the growth, or progressive sectors are getting smoked and that's why you have companies that are more value um strong you know strong cash flow all that stuff apple right that's why they held up a lot better this year right look at apple barely took a hit i mean relatively right so and apple's an extreme example i get it but you know a lot of your blue chips they held up for, for the most part and even them they get even, even blue chips got freaking smoked i mean microsoft's down like 70 percent right i mean but they ain't no Zoom, you know. Proportionately, if Microsoft came down as much as Zoom, it would be down to, you know, down here. But it held up a little bit better. So, hopefully, hopefully you guys are learning. Okay? What's good? Squaw, squaw. We here, brother. We live, brother. Been here since December 2020. Welcome back. We're here for another year on the YouTube. We're going to get to 100K subs one day. We just got to keep on keeping on, baby. But, uh... I myself had a pretty fine year with trading. You know, we lost some money, we made some money, but I learned so much as a trader and I am so ready to take on this counter year for trading, man. I'm so pumped. My trading has exponentially gotten better. Uh, I learned options this year and I've been trading options every day and I love it. And I just learned it this year. So I'm pretty proud that I was able to, uh, you know, figure them out play with them, learn strategies that I can be consistent with and understand, uh, learn a lot more about the broader markets. And that's the value I try to relay back to you guys, kind of like how I'm going through this spiel right now, right? The things that I've learned, if you haven't learned them yet, or you're newer to the markets, hopefully me telling you stuff like growth versus valuation, growth versus value companies and the adverse effects of printing $4 trillion and all that. Hopefully you guys can learn from that. Happy New Year's, goons. Goons.
I need to get my soundboard back. Nike and Apple. Sure. So I will do so I'll, I'll do more than one for you guys, but I'm gonna do one as I go down the list here. So you can see I'm hitting everybody's chat. So I'll go through one. Uh, so I'll do both, but uh, I'm gonna do one at a time. So Apple, Apple's good. I'm just a little concerned with Apple. Um, I like Apple for puts <laughs> right now. I think Apple has more downside. If you're looking to long-term invest in this, which I am personally, I am invested in this, but I always look to dollar cost average. I'm going to be waiting. I am waiting right now, cash heavy with a lot of these bigger companies, if I'm not already in them and or uh, just because I do think there's more downside in the markets. Now, Apple is the most heavily weighted component of the S&P 500. It's weighted over 6% and it's taken the lead and it has broken a key level right here, man. This is a big level on Apple and it has cleared it as of now. Uh, Looks like we are consolidating at it a little bit. So we haven't had complete follow through yet, but we had a strong close below this key level at 129.04. This was the 52 week low. This is the lowest level, the lowest price Apple hit all of last year. And we broke that last week. So be careful. And we had a strong close below it with this big boy right here. But the volume was kind of low, but granted uh, volume is always lower. Uh, typically during a, a holiday session, you know, there's less trading going on, things like that. So the volume's got a little smoke on it, but be careful, be careful. I do think Apple can see more downside for sure. doesn't mean we can't, you know, retest some levels here, get a little relief uh, before coming down, but be really careful, all right? The reason why I'm showing that too is because the S&P 500, um, if I had to speculate, I do see the S&P possibly, okay? It's been consolidating the last few trading sessions here. I do possibly see it coming up here to grab some more liquidity before making a further move down. I do think there's more downside on the S&P. I do think we definitely come back and retest the lows of last year as of now because it's 2023. So we'll see what happens. Uh, this does look like a little bit of a dead cat bounce to me though. Okay. That's formulating. So we'll see. We'll see if the markets do hold up. Okay. I, I doubt it, but uh, we'll see what the move is going to be. Is it going to go straight down from here or is it going to Give us that little retest there, right? that dead cat bounce, and then continue further down. We'll see. And Apple's going to coincide with this, right? Because it's the most heavily weighted component of the S&P 500. And this is the S&P 500. Gang, gang. Nike, real quick. I can cover that real quick here. Nike, it does look like it is trading a little bit in a premium here. Be a little bit careful, though, because it's 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 near that, that common, uh, you know, relative equal highs here, right? So it's testing that key level. I don't know how much smoke it has left. You can see that it is consolidating. It's really struggling to break above this level. It's just trading in a range kind of sideways like the markets and the volume is very low and it's staircasing down during this period. This, I, I would suggest this is going to come down before it sees any upside left. And you have quite a, you know, quite a bit of uh, imbalances in liquidity down here. All these little gaps that you see in between. Okay, be careful with that because Basically, what I'm seeing with these series of candles on here is that when and if price does start to fall down, it'll probably happen pretty quick. Be careful with Nike. Okay, it does look a little bit like it's it's struggling right now at this ceiling here. So it's had a nice push last few weeks, though. Okay, but be careful. What is that big ass move on Nike, though? What is that? Must have been a catalyst or something. Maybe earnings. Yeah, earnings. They killed it on earnings. They did very well. So retail still strong, baby. People still spending money. Marwalu, Marwalu. What's that? There's an ETF that goes the opposite direction of Kathy Woods arc fine. However, I can't remember its name. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Uh, I don't know the inverse ETF of the arc innovation ETFs. All I know is RK is one I look at. If you're looking at like growth stocks, right? So what are growth stocks? They're these companies that, uh, they're kind of speculative to an extent. Uh, they're just they're just very progressive. They're more forward thinking. They're good to look at because they're more mid cap. Some are small cap. So they're good to look at if you're looking for a potential larger yield on your investments. So this is what a lot of it is, right? So like Lucid, Lucid is going to be one, right? Lucid Motors, right? It's not really a big company yet. It's still mid cap. It's cheap. It's small, but they're thinking, you know, five years ahead, right? Five to 10 years out, right? Palantir is one. Uh, there's a bunch of them. So 
you know arc innovations again you can go to you can go to arc you can go to the arc investments uh page and they actually have about i think they have six etf six or seven and their newest one which is pretty interesting is like their space one so these are pretty cool to look at so if you guys are looking to again none of this is financial advice i don't offer that but if you're looking to invest long term this you can you can benchmark arc investments because uh they're watching like a lot of industries right disruptive industries even crypto autonomation right so if you like tech and you're trying to get into something that's like ten dollars now and could be 150 dollars in the future could be this is pretty cool to look at um space exploration they're in a bunch of stuff so they have etfs so just these balls of multiple companies of money and it shows you the breakdown of all the companies that they're in right reusable rockets orbital aerial drones right the drone so any drone company right you know there's taxi drones that are projecting the futures or you could look into hypersonics and look at subsidiaries of aerospace and defense 3d printing right like nano dimensions uh they 3d print semiconductors enabling technology a lot of opportunity okay and it's it's cheap man i mean <laughs> it's cheap so you can see that this industry is taking a hit and things only go down for so long baby ISO, HKD, Hootie, Cosm. Yeah, so I'm familiar with a lot of these. And Kala were some of the wildest movers in small cap of 2022. Yes, especially HKD. HKD was a WTF out of nowhere. This thing was absolutely nuts. So I have a private Discord channel. I'm not, not trying to get too pluggy here. All I'm saying is we have we have a penny stock guy in there and he alerts uh, for our team. So he'll send you guys, you know, the trade and when's he, when you're getting in and out. He signaled this thing when it was like 70 bucks and he 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 traded it all the way to i don't know how far he went i can't remember now i'm not gonna lie to you but i do know for sure he signaled this thing at 70 dollars, and he was just everybody in our discord was making money on this thing man hkd was nuts now obviously you got a little bit lucky with how parabolic it went but let me tell you man this thing i mean let's let's go down here for example so when it was 18 dollars, right let's just take a hypothetical example when it was 18 dollars in a span of 11 days okay less than two weeks this thing went up over thirteen thousand <laughs> percent what what that is absolute nuts that is absolute nuts I, I can't even bro if you had one share of this thing you would have made like assuming you sold the peak you would have made like almost over two grand so this is pretty it's pretty crazy positioning some shares in the tesla and neo for long-term growth nice 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 yeah tesla's good um i'm a tesla bull i've always been a tesla bull i've owned a tesla i know tesla i've been following elon forever uh I, yeah i'm just a, i'm a big tesla bull uh, yeah you know i think tesla's fine i still think there's more downside just like all these companies nonetheless I had a whole spiel about this and go watch my last video on Tesla. I did an analysis on Tesla. It's still relevant. Okay. Even though the video was made a couple days ago, it's still relevant. Go watch it. <clears throat> I talk about Tesla. I talk about my outlook for it. And I talk about why, you know, it's good to at least start putting your eyes on it. Because to me, the way I look at this is if you are bullish on Tesla and you're a true investor, five, 10 years from now, I don't think you're going to be kicking your ass if Tesla's at, let's say Tesla's trading at $500 a share. I don't think you'll be kicking your ass too much if you got in at Tesla at $123 or $80, because let's say it keeps selling off. I don't think it, I think it'd be fine either way, right? I think you'd be pretty happy as a person because you're 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 nearly 5x. It's the difference between five or six x six x really. But uh, everyone looks at that differently. But I don't think you'd be tripping either way. So you know, dollar cost average dollar cost averaging is a, is a highly preached uh, methodology of investing. Uh, but you got to do it with confidence and you got to do it sense with sense, right? Be sensical about it. Understand the company. Don't just like, you know, because you like it. Uh, liking it is, is definitely part of the battle. I think it's important that you enjoy what you what you invest in, you know, keeps. I mean, just passion alone will keep you invested in the company and doing your due diligence on it. It's hard to, like, keep up to date with a company you don't really give a damn about and you have all this money into it. Uh, so, you know, understand what your where your money's at and take care of it. Keep, take care of that nest egg and diversification is important too uh so i've been told and uh just what common sense tells me but yeah i'm not a financial advisor guys so you guys gotta go seek that i'm never telling you what to do um, i'm just giving you my opinion on tesla
yeah yeah neo and tesla gucci gang daily chart might look ugly but they had some of the biggest intraday moves yeah for sure all those uh so yeah cosm was one i was watching i i was watching ispo because of you uh all these were on my radar but the ones i probably watched the closest were maybe hkd cosm and kala kala was exploding recently actually yeah kala just freaking god mode over here look at this mother man and i remember <laughs> look at it still haven't charted here i think i think we were charting this uh on a sunday live no wednesday live it looks like yep because i go live on wednesdays usually and i was charting this i believe it was you i was talking about the bullish continuation potential on this because it looks so strong you know you had the falling wedge and then carried into the extended hours here had another falling wedge and then it broke out of that of course so that continuation was nice obviously you had some residual here in the pre-market hours kind of chilled out one day and then it just it just picked up again out of nowhere what the fudge man good god look at that volume out of nowhere man look at this power hour here man this is silly dude 85 percent from a low to a high of 85 percent in one hour yeah i'm done yeah kala kala's a beast man Kyle's a beast. It's holding up. Multi-day runner so far. It's a beast, man. Colossus. What up, man? Let me see how many likes there are, man. If there ain't a lot of likes on here, man. I got nine likes and I got 13 viewers, man. That means four of you guys are lazy to start off the new year. If you can't even hit the like button on a YouTube video, doggy, how do you expect to hit that buy or sell button, man? You can't even, you're screwed. You're screwed, dude. You can't even do the easy stuff, man. You can't, even, you can't even like a YouTube video. Jeez, man. You're in the wrong year, buddy. All right. I learned to not put as much. I learned to not put much percent into any one stock. Diversification. See, my ears. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, common sense says don't have all your eggs in one basket or two baskets, right? Mix it up. Um. Uh, you know it's a hedge essentially right i mean uh sorry it, it's a, it could be essentially a hedge you maybe tesla's getting freaking smoked one month but you know apple's killing it so apple's your hedge right um mutual funds etfs that's what a lot of like investors do mutual funds and etfs depends on your risk appetite uh, and also depends on what you're looking for, man, or what you appreciate. Some people like dividends, so you can't really get that with, no, oh, I don't think you can with some ET, maybe some ETFs you can get dividends. And then there's speculative assets like cryptocurrencies, right? So I'm in some crypto for sure. Um, I'm bullish on crypto uh, in terms of like, it, like it's gonna, it's like, it's just, it's just a matter of when I think at this point. And as you would expect with crypto, it gets rocky, man. It's just crazy to see how people like react to things, man. Like it's just like, oh, you got into Bitcoin and you're like freaking out right now. Like, what do you mean? You, you, what do you mean? Have you not looked at how this thing has moved in the past? This is how, this is what it does, right? If you get, you get this hiatus and then you bitch about it for a month or a year and then it gets all shitty and you're like, oh man, this is dumb. And then it shoots up again. You're like, oh, this isn't it. And then it shoots up again. You're like, oh, the crypto's done. It's like, dude, come on, dude, pick, like, smell the damn roses, man. It's a volatile asset. This is one of those things you just buy the shit and you throw the damn thing away. You, th you know, put it on a cold wallet, throw it in your safe. Look at, check it out in five more years. All right, and go buy your Lamborghini. That's what, you know, that's what crypto pretty much is. So it's coming. It makes sense. Uh, it's just, it's going through volatility. It needs to, man. It's in its genesis. It's still being understood. There's no regulations that are clear on it. Nobody knows what a stable coin is. Which ones are going to survive? You know, there's all these things coming out with frauds and, you know, shit coins and all that. We need to go through that stuff especially with something this new with a new asset it has to go through trials and tribulations and pains and then once we get all that through all that shit and ftx and once it gets through all that then things will iron out will smooth right we'll clear the pathway and i'm sure by that time it'll make sense to use this more as a utility and, and applications in the real world and stuff so uh, you know that's just my spiel about crypto i, I think it makes a lot of sense you just you guys gotta just be patient i mean I, that's how i know people aren't investors they're just they're just Hodlers, they're like, oh, it's going to 100k. It might, I don't know, but here's the deal: you need to be patient and just kind of like turn your screens off and stop looking at this shit for a couple years. 
you know because those are the guys who, who got rich dude you know they, they shut the hell up when it was doing all this they're like yeah whatever it's going to go up and then when everybody and their mom was all over it and it was all over all the media and twitter and all this shit oh bitcoin's up ten thousand dollars overnight and it's trading at sixty thousand that's your sign to maybe think about taking some profits right so just listen to the world around you and try to think a little bit differently switch your mindset if everybody's freaking out about something maybe that's time to buy right that's how i look at stocks that's how i look at a lot of stuff when everybody's like oh recession world's ending all this yeah that that means buy to me boy fuck out of here we live trading on discord tuesday uh maybe i don't know yet roblox let's see i i just don't know yet <laughs> i really don't i don't know i didn't really think about it um I have to think about that. I still got to prepare my charts for tomorrow. It takes me like an hour. <sighs> yeah, Roblox. Uh, probably we'll probably we'll probably trade live. I uh, just have to see a couple things. I, I just didn't think about it. It kind of smacked me in the face, but likely. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. If you guys want to trade live with your boy tomorrow morning, got to be my private discord, man. That links down below. Go ahead and check it out. Roblox looks oversold right kind of going back into that growth uh sector kind of thing i was talking about earlier uh you know it's it's oversold it's trading at all-time lows right now a few levels are holding us up right the, these two relative or these, these two relative lows right these prior lows so 2388 and 2165 those are kind of our major floors right now it is starting to see a little bit of uh consolidation right now small body candles makes sense though low volume last week uh, just be cognizant of a little bit of a gap up here, right? Could be good or bad, depending on what you're doing with it. Um, be cognizant of that gap, and then obviously your prior high right here is what you're gonna want to, what you're gonna want to clear if you want to see anything else from here. So 35, uh, it's like 35 bucks, 35, 37. Other than that, make sure we hold this floor up. And if we don't hold this floor up, you definitely are going to extremely likely will revisit these two levels on at least this re this most recent one, 2388. Okay, very high probability that you will revisit that if you break below your current your current range right here, your current low. And then uh, watch this gap up here. It's an interesting area. You could reject it or slide through it. And then if you do slide through it, this next level is going to be the kicker. You're going to have to break that. 35, 37 short term. I think NEO is opening up a dip buy. Try not to buy overbought. Try not to buy overbought is important. I feel in the markets at the moment. Yeah, so you won't ever time the bottoms. That's why, that's why y'all, um, you know, should look into dollar cost averaging because you'll never be able to time the bottoms just plain and simple. Uh, but I'd hate for y'all to see Neo when it's trading back at, you know, 40 something dollars and you're like, damn, man, I remember I was watching nine to five trader and that dude's a goat, by the way. And I was watching his live streams and he was talking about Neo when it was nine dollars and 75 cents. Damn, bro. I would have forex my money and i would have been like damn bro you dumb as hell i told you so all you got to do is you know do some dd man you guys had all winter break right pick one weekend right pick one weekend take a shit ton of coffee or just go buy a six pack of fucking bang energy and sit here and study neo understand the company what they do what the outlook looks like see if it makes sense then weigh your weigh your options too if I buy today at 975 or if I buy next month and it goes down to seven dollars and fifty cents, what's that look like? How much money am I putting in? How often am I putting in that money? What kind of average am I looking for? What kind of price target am I looking for? How long am I holding it for? Have all that laid out and uh you'll be on your way, baby. Yeah, Neo. Neo looks uh I like Neo, man. Good company. I know a lot about this company, more than I should. There's a damn bag behind me here that says Neo. You see that see that? You think I'm bullshitting right now? You see that? All right, I know Neo, man. I'm in it. E H, nice. Oh wait, are you asking? E Hang, damn, bro, give me a little substance, man. Y'all lazy as hell. <laughs> hey, man, I'm trying to get rich trading stocks, but I can only give you two letters. Yeah, so E H looks good. <laughs> It's breaking lows, right? Breaking relative equal highs, right? Broke above it, came back, retested, right? You just have a typical breaker, right? Going on right here. So, right? Pretty easy one. Let's look at the price action. It's bullish. It's bullish as hell. It's, you know, it's pushing. Um, volume is kind of 
Let me see here. Volume is, uh, it's okay. It's okay. It, it's, it's still relatively low though, so be careful. Um, seems like it's really moving off of nothing, unless they had news. Uh, but right now, it just seems like it's, it's just, you know, the price action, I mean, it looks bullish. It's extremely, I mean, even cleared prior, prior highs, right? Prior day highs from uh, Thursday and it cleared it on Friday. So it's got some strength here. I think Neo is going to eight because of Chinese New Year, January 21st and because of COVID increase in China. Yeah, COVID's, COVID's pretty bad. COVID's bad in China. I don't think we've seen the effects of that yet or the effects of rate hikes yet. So uh, you guys remember late rate, rate hikes have a huge lag. Okay, so all these FOMC meetings we've had over the last, I wanna say six months, none of that is priced, none of that has kicked in yet. You guys know that, right? We've only felt about one and a half, like 150 basis points worth of rate hikes. We haven't felt the other like 300 yet, right? Be careful, because that's gonna smack the market hard next year. When those rate hikes kick in, baby, that's gonna that's gonna be a nice kicker okay you're gonna see you're gonna start seeing the economy flush out a little bit so wait for those rate hikes to kick in baby yeah and then you got covid covid's everywhere you got a war going on for god's sake there's a lot of stuff going on there's a lot of stuff going on eh is a scam it pops due to some investment no product to sell <laughs> no product to sell xpev actually has have similar flying taxis as eh Oh, Xpong? Xpong has flying taxis? What? I thought they were just a Chinese EV company. Okay. Yeah, you know, volume speaks for itself, right? When I look at EH, even technically speaking, I don't have any fundamental basis on this company. Uh, when I see something pushing off nothing, like, there's no, like, it's like, it's like if I saw, like, a, a, like a little Honda car driving as fast as a Lamborghini, I would wonder why, right? And, I don't know if that was a good analogy, but my point is there's not a lot of volume on this thing. So there's no volume on it, but it's just been ripping lately. That's red flag for sure. So I don't know the validity of this move here. It's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Uh, usually, right, volume or price, volume precedes price action. And if there's no volume here. How the hell is the price action moving, right? So it, for some reason, it's just getting offered higher and higher up. And that suggests to me that there's big money moving this. I'm sure it's a low float. So I'm sure it's easy to move, All right? So if I, yeah, oh, yeah, dude, people, dude, if your money's right, you can move this company yourself. You can move the, you can literally move this ticker symbol yourself. The float is ridiculous. This thing's a micro cap. This thing's worth in less than half a billion dollars. Yeah, this thing is manipulated all day. I didn't even know anything about this company. I could just tell from the price action. It, it just doesn't make sense. It's weird. Uh, TD Bank, I check on it yearly. TD Bank. Okay, I'm not sure what the... Uh, I'm not sure what TD Ameritrade. It's, you're talking about the... What's the ticker? Oh, the ticker is, brother. Sark ETF. Oh, nice. Thank you, sir. Guys, I see there's some new faces in here. Leave me a subscribe, baby. Who else is YouTubing right now? Who else is covering your stocks? Ain't asking for nothing but a damn like button and a subscription. Hit that subscribe. Turn that notification bell. I go, sorry, I go live twice a week, okay? Every single week, I go live. No matter what, I don't miss. Even if I'm on vacation, I'll go live for you. It doesn't matter. I'll do it in the hotel room, okay? Or if I'm traveling. So I go live usually in the middle of the week and then I go live typically every single Sunday. So I'll get you covered leading into the week ahead. Okay. Hopefully you find that useful and then I'll cover you in the middle of the week. So if you guys are antsy about something, if you want me to check out your stock, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe and turn on the notification bell. You won't miss it. Okay, baby. And hit that like too. Damn it. Sark. Sark. Okay. Short innovation. The What? Okay. Hold on a second here. It's a little volatile. It's not really, uh, it's not really, uh, really. You would think it would have a, it'd be a little more proportionate. It really isn't, right? Oops. So here's Art K and here's Sark. So Sark, November 21st is when it went public. 
or when it was traded on the exchange sorry november 2021 november 9th 2021 so right there that's when start came out they don't seem that i mean yeah it, 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 better than nothing it doesn't it doesn't i wonder what the correlation is it's definitely not a one-to-one -one. it looks like it's trading a little bit more sideways though i would expect this to have a little bit steeper of a of a curve because this has a little bit more steeper of a down curve i would expect a steeper up curve it's almost like it's just trading kind of sideways but hey you know something you can look at for sure it gapped recently which is weird because this hasn't pushed recently <laughs> okay okay well, either way run the puts yeah man puts i've been shorting a lot this year uh shorting is easy man i love shorting i feel like uh when you short the moves they happen they happen quick and they happen nicer there's nicer moves when you short than go long in my opinion i think breaking out to the downside is a lot more aggressive than breaking up to the upside and i've always noticed that like for years so you, you see, even looking at penny stocks oh no not penny stocks take that back not penny stocks but even looking just at just you know stocks throughout the day and you'll see it right if you're watching like the one minute or any other you see how hard things break because everybody's stop losses are getting smoked and things like that all those limit orders down there all that liquidity yeah i got uh i i'm bearish on the markets in the next couple weeks we'll see what happens this is an int very interesting area for me up here um very interesting area for me up there uh, right now we're just we're going through so much consolidation i still have to analyze this tonight before i get ready for tomorrow but uh just high level interpretation tells me that we could get a, a little bit of relief before we see more downside that's just high level hypothetical guess again dead cat bounce dead cat bounce stemming from this trend that we were holding up right since october 13th when we saw that rally right just kind of going up here retesting that trend rebalancing price and then taking it further back down you know they're going to grab more liquidity and take it further to the downside and i think that's when we retest the uh, 52 week lows from last year so i don't know it makes a lot of sense i i really like think about it ask yourself i mean i don't i don't think it's going to do this right it just doesn't doesn't make sense i i i would i'll be my own ass if the s p 500 breaks this this long-term trend line here because the last time it attempted it it got freaking smoked okay it got smoked right there there's that candle and that's a weekly candle ladies and gentlemen and look at the volume all right so i'll be my own ass if this thing breaks i ain't breaking out we going further down baby all right gary what's up baby happy new year brother go go sold disney to buy tesla not sure if i should get back into disney or buy more tesla well i can't offer financial advice you guys got to remember that okay disney and tesla are great comp disney's a good company i hate disney personally just i have a personal thing with it but you know if i didn't personally hate it and i didn't have bias disney's a good company it really is and uh bob Iger's back so you know they're shitting pretty good they got good leadership good management um they're diversifying as usual that's why disney's such a strong company so they're not uh, banking so much on the parks anymore. They're banking on uh, media and they're dominating the media space pretty well. They're doing very well. They're holding up very well. So the biggest thing I'd watch with Disney is uh, that floor we're getting towards now. You're seeing a little bit of weakness in this pullback here, but you do have stair and you do have staircasing volume to the downside. So this does suggest that Disney from the, from raw price action alone, look at, and this is the weekly chart. Uh, looking at that alone, I would expect Disney to have some relief soon, personally. Uh, just makes a lot of sense. Looking at, uh, so I like to I like to use this EMA line here. And yeah, it looks really good. Uh, if you guys want to know how I use this to kind of swing or uh, predict things, make sure you go watch, uh, go rewatch the Tesla video I uploaded like a couple days ago. I'll explain to you in detail how to use this, okay? You guys gotta watch my videos okay i don't care if you don't like tesla or neo watch my videos i will always add nuggets of value in all my videos whether you're about that stock or not i promise you that's what i do so if you watch each one of my videos i'll show you guys like chart patterns right i'll show you guys how to find key levels i'll show you guys how to use indicators i sneak those nuggets into all of my videos so go watch my videos okay i will try to always make sure you guys are growing whether you're about the stock or not Okay. I just do the stock because it's, I'm listening to the community. They want to see EV stocks and shit, whatever. I'll do that for you. But watch my videos. 
I talk about it, use this 90 EMA. And based on that, it's looking pretty good. And you can even see on the daily chart, right? So we came down here, right? So the weekly looks like it was showing a little bit of relief, right? We could see some relief soon. And you come down to the daily, you can see that being even more supported, right? We're trading in all this consolidation here. We had a nice pop in volume here, nice little inside bar here. You have this nice piercing candle right here, right? That's a that's actually a nice piercing candle right there. How do we know that? You take this body of this candle, you measure it down to the 50. Yeah, we bought into it. Looks good, boy. Yeah, it looks good. So I like it. I like the stock. Again, with all these, you better be watching the indices. You got to be watching the S&P 500. You got to be watching the Dow, the NASDAQ. Pay attention to all these. Whatever correlates with your stock more. Pay attention to those while you're watching these. Uh, but Disney is looking interesting. Uh, again, long term, you know, to me, it's tomato, tomato. You know, Tesla tesla's probably going to give you a bigger yield over time you know it's, it's it has a lot more of a cult following it's it's more uh progressive right this is a technology company right it's a technology company it's an ev company they do a bunch of stuff so the projected yield on this is going to be much greater but that also offers instability and volatility versus disney disney's going to be a little bit more stable uh you know it, more stable of a company that, but they're steadily growing so it just it just depends on what you're looking for in, in your in your port but um it's hard to bet against either one it really is and, and disney's looking pretty damn cheap uh, just be careful man i mean it's been shattering some pretty significant key levels here this last foot that's holding us up what you really need to watch is going to be that 79 dollar mark okay 7907 but 79 dollars watch 79 dollars for sure because like i said you know we looked at the s p 500 and so when i was talking about disney I talked about like, hey, you know, it's consolidating a little bit. Could see a little bit of a relief here. That's true. But how much validity will be in that relief, right? Because if the S&P is going to come tumbling down, I don't see Disney not coming down with it. So maybe Disney does get that little relief I talked about. And then this happens and we come touch that 79 beforehand. And if we want to speculate even further, right? Look at this common trend line right that's probably likely where it will definitely struggle at or at least in the vicinity of that and that about lines up with the potential movement that we could see correlated with the s p 500 right right alongside it okay go to this that we talked about on the daily right it even has its own trend line get these out of here okay so we talked about the s p kind of doing that move and then that See how they're kind of lining up, right? Both consolidating, both approaching a major trend line. Both have a little bit of a, a little bit of room up above it here to potentially grab some liquidity before it makes a further move down. See how they're lining up. You guys, got to look at these things, man. I got you though. I got you. Nine to five trader. Hit that subscribe, man. I'll be looking at all these shit, man. Maybe dead cat bounce. On what? Cup and handle. Mozilla is just firing off. What are you what are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> are you talking about Disney coming handle? Are you talking about uh oh wait what Darth what up just came across channel bro is trying to send a super chat for some reason it says you aren't able to receive Oh really I can't I can't take super chats damn that's lame well hey appreciate the thought man <laughs> but uh yeah for sure uh let's see here uh i wonder why that is hmm. i don't know youtube goofy let's see exp well do me this favor okay this costs nothing to you yet if you wanted to check that link down below check out what i offer in my private discord we have a great community at least check that out if you don't like it whatever at the very least though leave me a like and leave me a subscribe brother because i go live twice a week all right so i'll get you covered expi yeah yeah so i, I get so distracted i was reading other chats i think i my brain thinks it can multitask okay i'd be really careful with this okay i'd be really careful with this the reason is is because we had a big shift the market structure here okay big one there so it stands for market structure shift this candle right here is very concerning this is why i'd be very careful okay because that closed with some sauce on it that's got some strength big body candled it's got some volume so 
I don't know if you can see the volume stick there. Yeah, see, it's got some volume. We broke structure right there. You need to be really careful with this one. Okay, this could definitely have some downside, and it does look like it is breaking out of a range, and that that you know could be it could be a range break too, right? Because we were trading in this little range here, pretty obvious one for quite a bit of time, and that that's probably explaining why there was so much more sauce on that move too, because we finally cracked out of this range we've tried to for so long. Um, and then it finally made its move to the downside. So be really careful with this. I mean, this could almost be dead cat bouncing right now. I'm not trying to be pessimistic. I'm just being realistic. That's what I do with you guys. I ain't going to hype your shit up. I ain't going to sit here and say AMC is going $1,000 this year. Hell no. You guys need that in your ear. You need that daddy in your ear once in a while. You got to stay off Reddit, Wall Street beds, all that bullshit. If you want to be safe and you want to know some things and you want an opinion from someone who is well-versed in technical analysis, I will tell you right now, with all honesty, this doesn't look the greatest because that is a huge level that we broke right here, man. That's a big level. And we broke it. Like I said, we broke it with some sauce. So be very careful. OK, there is always a chance, of course, that we are coming back into this range, though, and we might float. Whoop! damn. And we might start floating in here a little bit. So we might re-enter into the range. This could be a false breakout. It can be, honestly. Uh, but. <laughs> That is, that is some serious that is some serious movement right that is a big move brother that's on the daily too so be very careful here's another thing to look at too look at the weekly see that look at that see that hammer okay so we're not out the game yet you just need to be careful okay that's all i'm saying to you and none of this is financial advice you can do whatever you want you can be a savage you don't have to be careful if you if you're trying to be careful right you, i mean you don't have to be this could be a hammer right could be a false breakout like i said so just watch it very very close uh we know for sure that we are we're uh, not looking the best if we definitely break below the low of that daily candle though that i talked about this one right here right you, you have some common relative lows right here you break below that we're done all right ten dollars yep ten dollars we're around to that that's a psychological level i'm sure the market makers are watching if we break below ten dollars brother i don't know man I don't know, man. Code red. Code red Mountain Dew, brother. Spy. Oh, shit. I'm jumping across. I think long-term Disney is better than Tesla since there will always be new babies born that enjoy a different business of Disney. Maybe. Maybe. Disney's just like more of a... Like I said, they, they're not as... They're just like a steady, secure, slowly growing, you know, company, but they do very well and they perform well. Tesla is just more volatile. They're, they're just different beasts. One is one is tech and volatile. One is like, you know, uh, more retail media. You know, Disney is like the media kings, man. I mean, they got Disney Plus. They got ESPN. They got ABC, NBC. They own all that shit. I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, Illuminati. While Tesla EV hype is gone, and now every car company is making EVs long term, Tesla will be another car company among many. Maybe. Maybe. I don't think of it that way. But yeah, I mean, yeah, to each their own. I, I, think, I think Tesla is more of a, it's an investment on Elon is really what it is. That's why they have more of like a cult following. You got to remember that EVs, nobody's, ta nobody's talking about EVs until Tesla came out. You got to remember that they're, they're the most... Um, they have the most infrastructure developed right now, right? All the charging stations. They've gone through a lot more R&D. They've gone through a lot more issues. We haven't seen any of the backlog yet of all the gigafactories that are getting built. By the time they build a new gigafactory, they're delivering another million cars, right? So their market share is going to be really hard to beat. Uh, whether the EV thing is just a fad or not, their presence is going to be very difficult to dissolve. Uh, it could be... It'll be another... Yeah, it'll be... An, It'll be another car company, but that's what it is right now, too. It is another car company. Um, but you got to look at it relatively, bro. <laughs> Tesla's been around. Dude, bro, the first Tesla came out in 2013. Think about that. Ford's been out for over a century, over 100 years. Tell me how they're getting shitted on by a company that's been out for like a decade and a half, brother. Dude, you got to you gotta, you gotta, you gotta speculate a little bit, but... I mean, it's it's not even close. I mean, all these car companies have been out for decades, and Tesla Tesla wasn't even a thought. It wasn't even a thought in like the year 2000. It wasn't even a thought before cell phones came out. 
like it wasn't even thought when like smartphones came out and that company is dominating so yeah they got the, they got a nice little bump from society they got into this little fad evs all that bs but uh how fast they're progressing into the world i mean it's just it's, it's rare that you see something overtake like that that quickly it's 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 astronomical it's it's unbelievable to see a company create so much of a disruption in the world not just the the market space of automobiles right i mean you got you got you got like countries starting to think more about just green period because of the presence of evs right we've had solar panels forever we've had wind turbines forever we had all that shit that in other countries around the world that wasn't enough for them to consider going green it wasn't enough they thought about it for a split but now evs are so just they're making such an impact that it, it's causing that much of a shift in mindset that quickly for like the, the global economy it's, it's crazy it's crazy to me it's crazy to me i'm always a, i like motors oil's not going anywhere motors not going any, oil's not going anywhere anywhere motors aren't going anywhere there's a lot of mechanical advantages um but a lot of it's politics and abundancy but you know I don't think motors are going anywhere. I prefer a motor. I like the feels. I like. I mean, I had an EV too. I like both a lot. They're just way different. Spy, you want me to look at Spy? I already did Spy, bro. Probless volatile too. No, Elon tweets from Disney. Thanks for analyzing. We'll check out Discord anytime, brother. I wish Elon would quit sticking his neck up and out from Putin to our people and change an oil company. <laughs> He was Elon was quit sticking his neck up and out from Putin to our people in charge. And yeah, you gotta, you gotta kind of think of it the, uh, like, obviously, you know, there's bias cause I like Elon, but, and it, you know, obviously stuff is antics can get annoying and stuff, but that's just his rhetoric. Uh, my, you gotta, so be open-minded a little bit though. S this is truly a man who's looking out for the people and he's a little gopher and, but he's a gopher that can represent the people. Anybody who's in a tremendous position of power, right, is not going to represent the people like that. You don't see Jeff Bezos going out and trying to change free che free speech policy. You don't see him like you, you just don't see people doing that. Like you just you know what I mean. And he has so much empowerment. Um, so it's however you want to look at it, man. It's just it's rare that you're gonna. He's a leader. It's rare you're gonna see someone that has a lot of power who's an elite, who is the richest man in the world. So he's pretty elite uh that is really going to try to make an impact on the world obviously we're in the turbulence of it so to us it just seems annoying it seems like what the fuck is this guy doing focus on tesla get out of twitter is this a joke you can't just sink around you do but i i think i think i think we gotta we gotta be a little bit open-minded because he's been he's been like this his whole life it's just not been as highlighted, right? It's the same thing with Tesla or SpaceX. Everybody was looking at this dude like a gopher. It's like, dude, like your head's in everything. You're you're trying to send us to Mars and you're trying to put battery cars on the road. Like what the, what's wrong with you, dude? You're weird. You're annoying. Shut up, focus, right? So, and he's, I don't know. It's, it's really hard to bet against that man. Good luck. I would never bet against Elon. Not a day in my life. Not a day in my life. He, he's, he's had everything to prove and he's done it like, five times over so you gotta remember this man's like 50 years old too i mean shit it, it's really hard to bet against that man tesla suspends production at shanghai plant yeah i'm sure thinking of four theater situations i don't know the four theater situations i don't know what that is i really don't i'm not that i'm not that versed in the automotive industry i mean verse enough but or I just can't think of what you're thinking of. I'm sure I need a friendly reminder, but uh, leave me a like. Leave me a like. We got some good viewers here. So if you guys have any more stocks or just want to hear me rant, let me know. I'll get you covered on either or both. Uh, but yeah, you know, again, I talked about where the S&P could be headed. I do think we see some more red ahead. My, my prediction for next year, don't even try me with that. I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. I've been saying for a long time now, I do think we could retest pre-pandemic highs. I do think SPY or the S&P can see like 3,200 to 3,400. Um, so anywhere from, so here's 3,400, here's 3,200. I do think the S&P can fall into this area. I've been saying that for a while now, 
for a very long time. I share that with my private Discord. I share that with my whole gang. By the way, I do have a private Discord. I have to plug it just because I'm a savage. If you guys, <laughs> no, in all seriousness, if you want to join it, we go private. We go, we do private live streams almost every single day, and we do private learning sessions every single week with our analysts who send out trade signals and they show you their strategies there's no secrets in my group if people are making money doing something we will show you in detail hold your hand through it let you ask all the hard questions whatever you want and show you live and walk through it with you so that link is down below in the description for my private discord if you're interested just check it out you have nothing to lose you can at least see like what's in it and then if it's not for you like whatever dude you got nothing to lose it's not like i'm forcing you to do nothing I just want to throw that out there. That's what the whole banner is up here too, right? So I got to throw it out there because I'm all about the people, man. And the people need help. So I think the S&P 3,400, 3,200, that's my range. Uh, the closer we get, the more, the more I'm looking at my chops for some potential buying. Uh, my perspective on the macroeconomic scale of things, I do think we do. I think we have a strong underlying economy that's extremely unstable because of the instability. Um, you know, we're, it's going to be pretty volatile. I don't think the chop's going to go away too much, but it's going to be volatile. Uh, you know, consumer credit, like, you know, people are borrowing a lot of money. Everyone's savings is drained. Interest rates haven't kicked in yet, so that hasn't hit corporate America yet. Uh, unemployment is at the lowest it's been in four decades, and it needs to not be low. Like, we're in such a mess of economy that we, like, <laughs> unemployment is, like, the best ever. And we want people to like basically lose their jobs we need people to lose jobs that's how backwards this is because the more people that have jobs the more money there is circulating the more money that there is circulating the more inflation holds up the more inflation holds up the more economic downturn we see so uh, and then inflation needs to calm down with that other than that uh I, you know next year would be interesting i have no idea right and then we have a war going on across the world and we have china going on uh, with with instability there so there's geopolitical stuff going on you know we got taiwan we got supply chain issues with china import that imports and exports are being affected the supply chains across the globe uh ukraine and russia and then we have our own economy to deal with so uh it's you know nothing's really cold calmed down yet okay but uh i i don't know i go one day at a time as a trader as an investor as an investor, I'm patient, but as a trader, I'm one day at a time. I'm like, listen, I don't know where SPY is going next week, but I'll tell you what, I do know what's going to give me a narrative as to where SPY is going next week. That's it. Bias wise, I don't really have that until I'm in the middle of the day. I see key levels getting broken or some shit. I don't know where the market's going, brother. I don't have the crystal ball. If I knew where it was going, I'd be a billionaire, right? Think about that. If I knew where the market was going every damn day, I, I'd be, I'd be stupid, disgusting, filthy rich because I'd be right all the time. Right. Think about it that way. So I don't know where it's going, uh, but I can make a good interpretation day by day. Okay. It's the most I can do. Abe Lincoln, Abe Lincoln's the goat. Abe Lincoln's the goat. He's a good president. He, uh, he was the only U S president that had his liquor license. Did you know that? Are we officially in a recession now or still waiting? We're in a recession. We have been officially in one. It's all Biden changed the name. <laughs> Biden changed the definition of a recession. So basically, <laughs> we've had negative GDPs. We have back-to-back -back negative GDP quarters, which is usually a signal of a recession. He's And literally right before that, that GDP report came out, literally like three days before it came out, he's like, hold on, let me change the definition so people don't freak out. <laughs> freaking, freaking goon, man freaking go neo i already did neo please go rewatch the stream i covered neo actually more than once during this live and i made a video yesterday at neo that is still relevant because i released the video over the weekend so please go watch that seems like most of us here cares about neo yeah i have kind of this neo cult following which is fine i do want to encourage you guys to you know follow me not just for neo uh, I do provide as much value as I can for you. I like Neo. I'm a bull on it, but that's not all I'm about. I, I, I'm a, I'm a trader, guys. I trade options all the time. I trade penny stocks. I'm a trader. That's what I do. I'm big on trading. I'm an investor too. I do both. I just love the financial markets. I understand a lot of stuff, the macro scale of things, right? I understand more technicals and fundamentals. Obviously, you can tell by my videos, but I love trading. I love the stock market. Okay. I know I know a thing or two about crypto too. 
uh, I can show you guys a thing or two. I can help you with price action. I can help you show you things. I can show you strategies, all that good stuff. That's all I'm trying to offer on my channel. We'll sprinkle in Neo once in a while because I know my cult following <laughs> wants to see Neo videos. But please understand that, uh, you know, I, I think I can provide a lot more value for my Neo bowls in here. So make sure you're checking out my other videos. Make sure you're commenting on all my videos. Comment on my Tesla video. I don't care if you like Neo. Comment on the Tesla video. I, I just mentioned a bit ago, my Tesla video, guys. I literally showed you how to use two indicators in that video. How to use them when you're trading. So it doesn't matter what you're trading. It doesn't matter if you're trading Neo. It doesn't matter if you're trading AMC in that Tesla video. Like every video, I throw in nuggets, nuggets, guys. Nuggets of value. What's a stock pattern? Here's an example one. How do you trade it? How do you find key levels on the chart? How do you trade different indicators, right? I'm gonna slowly do that, right? Because I know I know if I just put a video out that says how to use the RSI indicator, nobody's gonna freaking watch it, right? But if I put NEO price target and then put how to use RSI indicator in the <laughs> off to the side, it'll get a lot more views, I promise. So but make sure you check out the other videos, okay? It's just, make sure you do that i did cover neo nothing against you i just covered it a lot already okay mac we'll learn to trade instead of limiting to one stock we'll add we'll add your discord thanks yeah discord link down below if you guys are interested in joining man it doesn't hurt you to at least check it out at least see what you uh can get out of that brian what's up brother thanks doc for what you do appreciate all your technical videos keep doing you big dog never know when the channel will explode appreciate it man much love baby Appreciate that, man. I'm going to pin that. Thank you, brother. It means a lot to me. All right. Let's check out this comment down here. I can't get to it. You took some time off, and I was sad. Thought of the channel. Thought the channel was that. No. I focused. Basically, I focused a lot more on trading. I opened up this Discord, and my Discord was doing very well, and we had a really big community in there, um, and I was just kind of caretaking that, and that was taking a lot of my time up, and I just kind of fell out of YouTube, but... No, I've been I've been growing everything nicely now. So YouTube, we're firing that back up all this year. Uh, Twitter, my Twitter's growing really well on there. Twitter is uh, nine to five trader. So nine to five underscore trader. Look me up on Twitter if you want. Um, I go live on Twitter uh, about every other night. So I'm on Twitter Spaces if you want to hop in there, learn a thing or two. And then Instagram as well. Um, so my Discord. So my other community is known as Stock Picks. And stock picks is my Discord community, everything. So my Instagram is that as well. Anyways, all that stuff's down below. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't fucking leaving, baby. We here. Yo, Tom. I ain't leaving. Other than that, guys, let's kick off this year strong, baby. Nine to five traders here. I got you covered all year. I go live twice a week. Hit that subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss another one, baby. Hit that like button. If you can't the like button, how the fuck are you going to hit the buy or sell button when you're trading, man? You can't hit the like button, doggy. That's too easy. Hit that for me. And other than that, stay tuned in my videos, guys. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be providing you guys value each and every week. I'm gonna be providing you guys value each and every week. That is my job. I love this trading shit. I'm gonna stay after it. So if you guys wanna follow along, whether or not it's up to you, but hey, you're gonna see me slowly progress through life. And I don't want to leave you guys behind. So come on with me on this journey, baby. Other than that, I'm gonna wrap up this live stream. Happy New Year, everybody. Let's get it this year. Gang.